What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm taking a look at the sneaker releases in the first half of July and whether I think they're going to sit or whether I think they're going to sell. Today's video is brought to you by Rejuvenator, which is my go-to when it comes to all my sneaker cleaning needs. If you're interested in checking out any of their products, make sure to do so by clicking the link in the description below and using my discount code SETH for 10% off. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet. Also make sure to check me out on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler, but if you're not new to the channel you know how these videos work in the middle of the month and at the end of the month we take a look at all the upcoming sneaker releases for the next two weeks or so I try to cover all the releases that you care about and let you know whether I think they're gonna sit or whether I think they're gonna sell of course as you already know this entire video is based solely on my own personal opinion so don't base your buying decisions off what I say only buy a shoe if you like it and not because someone told you to but with that out of the way let's jump right into the sneaker releases in the first half of July starting things off on July 1st we've got the Adidas City Sock Love in the core black colorway. This shoe is the Adidas City Sock 1.0 with a more premium makeover. Of course, as you can tell by the name, the shoe comes in a core black colorway. It's not a bad looking colorway and the City Sock silhouette is a pretty good looking shoe as it is. But as we've come to see from pretty much all the NMDs, the hype has kind of died down and I just don't see these shoes selling. In the same vein, we've got another City Sock Lux, this time in the Night Cargo colorway. Again, a more premium take on the City Sock NMD, and honestly, I might like this colorway better than the black colorway because I just think it's more interesting to look at. But as I said before, the NMD hype just isn't there anymore, and I just don't see this shoe selling out. Next up is the Air Jordan Why Not 0.1 Low in the triple black colorway. Russell Westbrook has had a long history with Jordan brand and the Why Not 0.1 is his first signature performance model. Of course, this is the low top take on his silhouette and it comes in a triple black colorway, but as nice as I think his silhouette is and as well as I think it performs, I just don't see this shoe selling out. Continuing with July 1st, we've got the Nike Epic React in red, black, true white. This is kind of a weird Nike Epic React. The colorway is just kind of off. I don't get the really heavy red and black color blocking. It just doesn't make sense to me and I'm not a huge fan of the way it looks. Maybe it's a limited edition sneaker. I don't think it is though and I think the colorway is really polarizing. So for that reason, I think this sneaker is going to sit. Finally rounding off July 1st is the Nike Air Max 1 Premium Beach Camo. This is a beach or desert camo Air Max 1 and I don't think it's a bad looking shoe. I'm not one for camo but I know there's a huge market for it and as for camo sneakers I think this does look pretty good. I would also assume that this shoe is more limited than regular Air Max 1s. Not really something that I'm looking to grab but maybe something you're looking to grab. With that being said there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of marketing oomph behind it and I don't really know of any hype around it so for that reason I think it's gonna sit. Moving on to July 7th, we've got three pretty big releases dropping. The first is the Air Jordan 1 OG in the Hyper Royal colorway. This is a pretty much all blue Air Jordan 1 with a white Nike swoosh. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is one of the only OG Air Jordan 1 releases this year that I'm not really a fan of. There's nothing wrong with the shoe, it's just in my opinion, there's just too much blue. It's just too much of one like really saturated color. Like if it was white, black, or something neutral, I wouldn't mind so much, but this bright blue, I don't know what I'd wear it with. As we all know, the Air Jordan 1 has been very popular, and I think the silhouette's popularity is really the only saving grace with this sneaker, but I think even with that, it's not enough to make the sneaker sell out. Next up, we've got a Paris-only release with the Air Jordan 3 K54. Every year, Jordan brand releases a limited edition sneaker in honor of this Parisian basketball event. And I've gotta be honest, this is one of my favorites. I love the overall black colorway with a couple hits of blues, pinks, and greens. The Air Jordan 3 silhouette obviously is already a great sneaker, and I think the story behind this shoe is excellent. With that being said, this is a sneaker that a lot of people want, and to my knowledge, it's only available at this event or maybe at some retailers in Paris. So for that reason, it's definitely gonna sell out. And finally, rounding off July 7th, we've got the Adidas Yeezy 500 in the triple black colorway. This is the one 500 that I actually think looks good. Not great, but it looks okay. You guys know I don't love the Yeezy 500. It looks like a bug in my opinion, and that's not something I'm really attracted to. This colorway, however, masks all those weird, ugly, organic shapes around the upper of the shoe. And if I was to keep a Yeezy 500, I know I still have the Supermoon Yellows, kind of trying to unload those, but if I was to keep one, this would be the one that I would keep. Because of the increase in stock, Yeezy popularity and hype has gone down a little bit, so I don't think this shoe will be impossible to get. However, I think out of the three Yeezy 500 colorways that have been announced officially, this will be the most popular. If you know sneakers at all, you know Yeezys sell out, and this shoe will be no different. 
Moving on to July 9th, we've got the Super Limited Air Jordan 3 JTH in the beige colorway. This is the second Justin Timberlake Tinker Hatfield collaboration on an Air Jordan 3. The sneaker is based off Tinker Hatfield's original sketch of the Air Jordan 3 and consequently features a swoosh along the lateral side. Some people aren't a fan of that. I think it looks nice, especially on the original JTHs. One thing I like about this shoe, and I think a lot of people will like, is that the swoosh is actually the same color as the rest of the upper, so it's hidden pretty well. But it still provides that little subtle detailing on the side, which I really like. This time around, Around, the shoe comes in a beige suede or nubuck. I'm not sure which one until I actually see the shoe in hand if I'll ever get a chance to see the shoe in hand. To be honest, I don't like it as much as the first Super Bowl or white cement colorway that originally dropped, but it's not bad and I'd love to grab a pair to review. If you're trying to grab one pair of sneakers to flip this month, this is probably the one to go for because resale will be insane. With that being said, this shoe will definitely sell out. Next up, on July 12th, we've got the Air Max Deluxe Photo Blue. I've gotta be honest, I don't know much about this shoe. I've never been much of an Air Max head. Although in most cases, you can determine whether a sneaker is gonna sell out or not based on the amount of publicity it gets and the amount of hype it has. With that being said, I haven't heard much about this shoe. It could be limited, it might not be limited. I'm honestly not sure, but just based on what I've heard, I don't think the shoe is gonna sell out. Totally could be wrong on that, I just don't really know much about the shoe. Moving on to July 13th, we've got some of my favorite releases of the entire year. The first sneaker dropping is not one of them, it's the Under Armour Curry 5 Elemental. This is a whitish, grayish Curry 5, nothing crazy, nothing I'm interested in. I just don't see this shoe selling out. Next up, we get to the shoe that I was talking about, the Nike React Element 87. This shoe was already released overseas and it was slated to release last month. However, Nike pushed it back in the US for some reason. There's a black and gray anthracite colorway and then sort of a tan and red sail colorway. Personally, I love the sail colorway. I think it looks incredible. The black anthracite colorway doesn't look bad, but it's just not that exciting. I've already ordered a pair on StockX, so that should be coming in hopefully next week, so a review should be coming soon. But from what I've heard from Fomer Simpson and Hess Kicks, it's extremely comfortable. And I love the fact that it's got a see-through upper, which to be fair, isn't new at all, but I think it's really cool that you can change your socks and it completely changes the entire look of the shoe. Based on what we've seen with the overseas release and the current resale price, which is pretty much $100, $200 over retail, this shoe is definitely gonna sell out. Moving on to July 14th, we go from one of the best releases of the year to one of the weirdest, and that release is the Don C Jordan Legacy 312. I've loved everything else Don C has done, this shoe was kind of a shock to me, like it's a hybrid. He released a hybrid. When leaked images first came out of the shoe, it was universally panned because it just doesn't look good. And if I'm remembering correctly, Don C came out and said, once you see official images, it'll change your mind. I have seen official images and it 100% hasn't changed my mind. Apparently this shoe is supposed to channel his upbringing from Chicago. Not sure how it does that. It's like a hybrid of the Air Jordan 3, the Air Jordan 1, and the Alpha Force Low. So on the 14th, we've got five colorways dropping for $160 each. The first is the white, gray, and green colorway, which is based off the Command Force. The second is the brown, blue, and white colorway, which is based off the Medicine Ball. The third, and honestly, in my opinion, the best looking, is the black, white, and infrared, which is based off the Air Tech Challenge Hot Lava. It's even got that same black and infrared pattern on the heel counter, which I actually kind of like. And then immediately after, at number four, you've got probably my least favorite color, Way, which is the neon green colorway called Ghost Green. All neon green with some white. It's a weird looking shoe. And then finally, you've got the blue, white, and black colorway, which looks just like a Fragment Air Jordan 1, except on just a really bad silhouette. Um, I don't know what to say about this shoe because I just don't like it. To be fair, because this is my official job now, I probably should grab a pair to review for you guys, so I guess I'll be trying to grab a pair. Because it's Don C and because it's technically an Air Jordan, I do think the shoe will probably sell out. I don't know what colorways will go first. I don't know how limited the shoe is overall, but I do think most colorways probably will sell out in most sizes. I couldn't tell you about resale though. I just have no idea how people are gonna take this shoe. And then finally, rounding off July 14th, we've got the very first grain of salt alert. <laughs> I'll save that, that's gonna be in the video. This grain of salt alert is about the Air Jordan 5 bread. As of right now, most sites are saying that this shoe is gonna release on July 14th. We haven't heard any official word from Jordan brand about it. I don't know why they would release this shoe on the same day as five other Don C Jordans, so it's kind of weird to me that they have the release date on the 14th. The reason I've given this shoe a grain of salt alert is because you definitely need to take this release with a grain of salt because honestly, I don't think it's releasing on this day. But that's what all the sneaker outlets were saying, so I could be totally wrong on this, but again, take it with a grain of salt. If and when this shoe does release, I could see this shoe selling out. And finally, rounding off the first half of the month, on July 15th, we've got the Nike Kyrie Low Black Metallic Silver. This is technically a new Kyrie silhouette, and it's the first low Kyrie sneaker. I love Kyrie Irving, I like his sneakers, I think they perform really well. However, I just don't see this shoe selling out. 
But guys, that pretty much wraps up the video for today. I'd love to know your thoughts on all the releases in the first half of July, so make sure to leave your comments in the comment section down below. Also, do me a favor and head on over to Instagram and give me a follow at RealSethFowler on my Instagram TV account. I've started doing a lot of IGTV exclusive videos, which include unboxings, behind the scenes, all sorts of good stuff. So make sure to head on over there, follow me at RealSethFowler to check it out. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.